Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. John Barkum, and I'm the Director of Strategic Relations at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Carterock. It's the Navy Laboratory in Bethesda, Maryland. And welcome to the first of a academic engagement um, research seminar series that we're starting. Uh, uh, under the, the Naval X Tech Bridge program. So this is a, a joint um, venture of the Capital Area Tech Bridge and the Southern Maryland Tech Bridge. So it's primarily aimed at university lectures accessible to undergraduates and really meant for all for the, um, ah, very good, screens are up, for really anyone to kind of find out what we're doing at a research level and in, in small tidbits and in interesting uh, areas. So I wanted to put up just a couple of slides before I introduce the speaker on what the tech bridges are. Many of you who have seen our emails and talked to us before know what that is, but it started out by uh, Assistant Secretary of the Navy to really connect the Naval laboratories with companies, business industries and each other and with academia. So what you're talking to is the collective um, um, force of the uh, local areas of, of, the, of these tech bridges of laboratories, primarily in the, in the uh, central um, Atlantic area, but really across the nation. So um, I put this up primarily for you to read what these tech bridges are and these slides will be available so you can look at the links. Could you go to the next slide, please? And this shows, Thanks. And this shows just a map of the tech bridge concept. Uh, there's plenty that you can look up on this, so I won't go into it. So uh, here, obviously, in the Maryland DC capital area where we are, you see capital, Southern Maryland, and Mid-Atlantic. And what we're going to do in these lectures is try have a springtime series and a fall series. So that's probably about three in each one. And we're starting out today with a lecture from NAVAIR, the Naval Air Systems Command, in Patuxent River from the laboratory. A very, very interesting talk, at which I'm looking forward to. And I'm without any further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Miss Teresa Schaefer, who is the, the manager of the Southern Maryland Tech Bridge located in Pax River. So Teresa. Hi, uh, thank you, John. So as John mentioned, I'm a Dr. Teresa Schaefer. I work for the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division in Patuxent um, River, Maryland. So if you want to go to the next slide, please, Ashley. Um, so the speaker today, we're going to have a uh, Ms. Norma Grados, who is also at NOC AD. And so she will be talking a little bit today about the work that she's done to develop um, a MATLAB code for synthetic, synthetic ad, aperture radar. So just a quick tidbit on what NOC AD is. So we are the Navy and Marine Corps arm for anything related to research, development, test, procuring, supporting all of our aircraft, aircraft systems, and integrating those systems onto our ship. Um, we help our Navy and Marine Corps with capability and readiness. We are the busiest flight test center in the world. We have about um, a little over 10,000 civilians that support uh, NOC AD here at Patuxent River and at our Webster Outlying Field. And we have over 400 labs that support our mission. Uh, next slide. So as I mentioned, our speaker today, uh, she's an electronics engineer. She graduated in 2019 with a bachelor's in electrical engineering um, from the, I believe the University of Texas El Paso. Is that right, Norma? That's correct. Um, she currently is working for in our avionics department here at NOC AD and she's in the information processing and display branch. So she would uh, like to go ahead. I'll, I'll hand over the reins over to her so that she can introduce herself further and uh, kick off our, our tech. Thank you all for joining today. Over to you, Norma. Hi, uh, my name is Norma. Um, I, as Dr. Schaefer said, I work at NOC AD in the Information Systems and Displays branch. I, so today we are going to go over MATLAB user interface development. So the things that we will cover is MATLAB guide and MATLAB app designer. These are two different methods for creating graphical user interface. 
And we are going to create the following. We will create an image selection button, an axis to display the image we will select, a text edit box where we the user will be able to name the output files, a save files button where the user will select where to store the files, three checkboxes because in my project, it's we, we look at the three channels for the images, the red, the green, and the blue, and the execute button. And we will create these for both methods of graphical user interfacing. So we will start with guide. So when we open MATLAB, we will get this window. Here on the command window, we type guide. And we will get this window pop up. We will create a new GUI, a blank GUI, and we click OK. And this is the window that will pop up. So here, the first thing that we're going to do is, like I said, an image selection button, which is right here where it says push button. Then an axis, which looks like the little graph right here. Then a text edit box. As you can see, we have two. One of them is edit text and one of them is static text. For right now, we're gonna be using the edit text box. Then we're going to create another button. We can simply click on the one we had created and control C. Then we were going to create three check boxes, which looks like right here. And we can do the same, control C and control V. And we will create one last push button, which is the execute button, and we can copy it and paste like before. So now we will, are going to rename the elements. So we can just double click on one of them and we will get the this window pop up which is a property inspector. We scroll down all the way to where it says string. The string is what is displayed on the actual interface. So since this is gonna be the image selection button, I'm going to display select image. And for the tag, this is what's gonna, what the function is gonna be named on our code. So I want to name it image selector. And we click enter so that we can make sure it saves. Then we move on to the edit. That one, I want to display file name because the user is going to change the way the, the name of the, of the, the way the, the files output it are gonna be named. We click enter and the tag, I'm gonna leave the same for this one. For the second push button, I'm going to name it i'm going to display select folder and i'm going to name it save button and for the check boxes like i said are for the three channels so i'm going to rename them after the channels so this one's going to be red for both the tag and the string this one is going to be green. And this one is going to be blue. And you guys can stop me if you guys have any questions. So now mm, I'm going to rename the, but the final button. And this one is going to display execute and I'm gonna tag it execute as well. Now, to make sure that you actually save those changes, you can click on the elements and well, you can see that the displayed text changed, but to check if the tag changed, you can look down here and it says the tag. So all our tags are changed to what we wanted them to be. Now, after this, we click Save, and we can name this whatever we want. I'm going to name it Guide Project. 
And as you can see, it automatically created the basic code that we need for, to use the elements we selected. So the first element we created was an image selector callback. So that's where I'm going to start. So this callback is going to tell the code that we need to get a file. So we need to create a variable where we're going to save the file name and the path name. So we start with a square bracket, file name, comma, path name. We make that equal to UI get file, which is a command to actually obtain the file. And we need to tell it what type of what type of file we're gonna get. And in this case, I'm gonna get an image, so it's gonna be a JPEG. And here I'm going to tell the user to pick an image. Then I'm going to create an if statement to check whether the user selected an image or not. So if file name is equal to zero, or the path name is equal to zero, display user pressed cancel. Try again. So this, this text is actually going to be displayed right here in the command window if the user doesn't select anything. Else, so if the user does select an image, we need to tell it where to store that. So I will name another variable, file name complete, and that's gonna store both the file name and the path name. So str cat, it's string concatenation. So this is gonna glue both the path name and the, the file name together. Path name, file name. And like I said, if I'm going too fast, you guys can go ahead and tell me to slow down. Then I'm going to, cre to create another variable. It's gonna be named A, where I'm gonna read the image. So it's gonna be I am read file name complete. Then we need to call axes and select the axes where we are going to display this. So this is gonna be on axis one. And we use I am show, which is for image, like I said. And that's going to display the image that we selected. I want to give it a title. And I'm going to title it the name of the file. And this is why I didn't simply use file here. I used file com because I wanted to use the file name and not the entire path as well to display the title. So now I am going to pass a variable, the variable A, by using handles.a. That way I don't have to type it here on every callback. So I do handles.a equals a, and GUI data, h object, handles. And this helps update the handle. So these two lines are for passing that variable. And we can end our if statement right here. So this is the end of the code for our image selector callback. So now we can move on. So for edit callback, we're not actually going to do anything on this code because we're simply gonna get the, the text that the user inputs for the title, for the title of the output. So this is going to wait until we actually start working on the execute button. So we move on to the save button callback. So this one, we're going to catch a path name. So here, it's gonna be a little similar to, to what we did here, but instead of getting both a file and a path, we're simply telling it where to store it. So we're only going to save the directory. So it's gonna be path name, and this path name is a complete different one than we used 
in the other function because we only passed the variable a, we didn't pass variable path name. So now it's gonna be UI get directory and we're gonna tell it where to start the user at. So I wanna start in my C drive in the users folder in user. And this can this might be a little different depending on, on your computer, how you have your file set up, but usually they'll you can all start them at the C folder. Now we're gonna enter a NIF statement. So we can just copy that part from here. So if here we're only checking for the path name to be equal to zero. If the user doesn't select a directory, it lets you know and it tells you to try again. So if the user does select one, we are going to pass the path name. That way it can be available for us to tell it in our execute button where to save the output. And we can end that one right here. So now that we have done that, we can continue on to the red callback. So the way that this one differs from edit is that here we are going to get the value here and we're going to pass it to execute because since all three are gonna be the same, it makes no sense for me to type the same three lines of code three times in the execute function when I can do it here in their callback function. So this part is gonna be the same for all three, just with a different variable name. So I'm gonna make it red equals and we can copy from here. It gives you a hint on how to catch the value. We can copy this and paste it there. And we are going to pass the variable name. So handles.red equals red. We data object comma handles. So this is going to be the same for the for the three channels. So we can just copy this from here and paste it on our functions, simply changing the variable name. So here it's going to be green and here as well. And for the blue, we can do the same thing, just rename the variables. And now we can finally move on to our execute callback. So in the execute callback, we need to start by catching the variables we passed. So we do that by calling them back. So I'm gonna keep most of them the same, but just because it was called handles.8 doesn't mean it needs to be called A in this function. You can name it B, you can name it pretty much anything you'd like. But I'm gonna keep most of them the same just to keep it uniform. The second one is gonna be path. So handles that path name. And I'm just cutting it to path just so I don't have to write path name every time I use it. And then the three channels. So red equals handles dot red. Green equals handles dot green. And blue equals handles dot blue. So now we can finally move on to our output files. So the first one, we're gonna set it in figure one. And I want to output the image I selected because I want to save that image to tell our data set which image we actually ran the histogram for. If we just run the histogram, we won't know what file we used for that histogram. So this is important. So I'm going to display. So I am show A. And I'm going to title it color image. 
So in, in my project, we actually look at the channels individually. So when you look at an individual channel, it's gonna look like a black and white image. But so that's why this is important. Here, I'm just gonna use the color image, not, not the white and black image for each channel. But in my work, we do need to set, save them in a specific manner. So that's why I'm setting the title to color image. And I'm going to create a variable to catch the name that the user selected for it. So this variable that this will give us right here, that's where I'm going to catch it in final. So we do that by get handles.edit1, comma, and it's going to be a string type. Then I'm going to string concatenate. So I'm going to glue this to another string. And this string is going to be one.jpg. So this line is to make sure that I don't simply, so this code is going to output two images. And since I'm going to output two images, I don't want one to be saved and then the second one to replace it with the same name. So I'm adding this part so that it'll be whatever the user wants and then a one. And the next one is going to be the same, but with a two. Save as, and here is, GCF is actually telling it that GCF actually holds the handle for the current figure. So this is how we're telling it, hey, the current figure I'm working at, that's the one I want to save. And then we need to give it the file name. So full file, path, comma, final. So here I'm telling it where to store it and what to name it. So now we continue on to the three channels. So here I only have the color image, so we need to actually separate the image into the three channels. So we do that by getting YR and XR from the image, and you do it with the command image histogram. So I am hist for the file A, colon, comma, colon, one. So here, the colons are telling it, hey, I want every row and every column, and the one is telling it only from the first channel of this image. So the first channel is red. And we do the same, but for the other two channels. But the green, well, we change the variables to G, and we change the channel from one to two. And we do the same for blue. But now instead of channel one, it's going to be channel three. So the second one, we need to display the figure as well. So figure two, and I'm going to tell it to hold off. So this line is important because if the user, let's say, they say, I want to see the red channel by itself. So they select the image name it, da, 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 select the red channel and execute. And then they say, hey, I now I only want to see the green. And they simply select and unselect the red and execute. It's not, it's going to show them both the green and the red because it didn't reset the figure. Here by selecting figure two and hold off, it will reset the figure. So now we, we type figure two again so that we let it know that's where we want to plot next. And we're going to do an if statement to check whether it selected or not the red, the green, and the blue channel. So if red is equal to 1, we're going to plot XR and YR as a red line. And we're going to create another if statement inside this one to let the figure know, hey, are we going to continue using it? So we're going to check whether green or blue are also one. So if 
is equal if green is equal to one or if blue is equal to one, we're going to hold on. Otherwise, hold off and we would be done with that. So we can go ahead and end this if statement and this one. So we can copy this code and do the same thing for the other two channels. So now we just need to rename them. So this one's gonna be green and it's gonna be XG and YG as a green line. So here we don't need to double check green. So this one has to be changed to red. And we do the same for this one. This one's gonna be blue, YB, XB, blue, and here, instead of checking blue again, we're gonna check red. So the last step is to actually save the image. So we can copy this code from here, right? From title all the way to save as. So we copy that and paste it right here. So this is not gonna be the image. This is gonna be the histogram. So we can title it histogram. And like I said, here, it's going to be saved at this as the second JPEG. Now uh, we should be done. We can try to run it. So we can select an image. Let's say I want to select this one. It displays the name that I have for the image. So you can see that this one's named red. And remember where we put pick an image? This is where it displays, pick an image. So we select the image and let's say I wanna name it Red Corvette and I wanna select the folder. And I'm gonna make a new folder. Let's name our folder Corvette. So I'm gonna select that folder. And at first I just wanna look at my red, the red channel. So this is the red channel, but hey, you know what? No. And I want to select all three. So we execute it and it shows you all three channels. So we can go ahead and check if it saved our images. And there we go. Our images are saved. And they are named Red Corvette 1 and 2. So I can go ahead and close this. So sometimes I make the mistake of closing my GUI. You, you can't simply open it from here for the, from the current folder, because if you do, it's gonna open the interactive one. So what you're gonna need to do is type guide over here in the command window one more time. And instead of creating a new one, you open an existing one and you can select the one we just created and it opens it up in case you wanna change anything or add any new elements. Are there any questions? I, it's John Barkham. I think people are, are putting uh, some questions in the chat. Um, I, I, I actually seeded it myself because I used to work in MATLAB years ago. So I'll ask my own question. Uh, how does the MATLAB GUI compare to others that you can use? And I'm thinking of some Python based in terms of your speed of development and ease of programming. So MATLAB may not, sometimes it may not be the best to use, but I, for me, it was the first time I was developing a GUI. So it's a good way to start to learn how to develop GUIs because you can also click here, like for, let's say you had a question for any command. So let's say, I want to, I want it help with UI get file and it tells you, it gives you little examples of how to use that command right here. You can, you see it and it tells you, oh, hey, you can put the file name, path name. So this is exactly what I did, right? And it gives you little examples of, oh, hey, if you wanted to select a MATLAB file or do different, be able to select different type of files instead of just a JPEG file. So here it gives you little examples and it gives you more resources 
for where what you might be looking for or where you might find more support. So if there's no other questions, I will finish with this one and we can continue on to app developer. So app designer, I mean. So you go up here where it says apps and you click on, hey, I wanna design an app. So we're gonna, for this case, we're gonna create a blank app, but like I said, MATLAB has a lot of different resources. So it gives you various examples and they're, they're, they're pretty good because they're very diverse. So I'm gonna click a blank app and we're gonna create the same elements that we did for the first one. So we're gonna do the exact same work, but here it's gonna be a little different because this one is more, I guess you could say live than the other one. So here, the first element was a push button, then an axis, then edit field, then another push button, the three check boxes, and the final execute button. So here, the first thing I'm gonna do is change the text displayed. So for the first one, I want to put select image. And if you can see over here, it changed the name to select image button. I want to get rid of the button. I don't want to have to type select image button every time, so I'm just going to leave it to select image. Then the edit field, I'm going to change it to file name. And here you can see I changed it to file name edit field. Again, I'm going to get rid of the edit field. Just leave them how I left, how I typed it. So now this one is going to be select folder and get rid of the button name. And the three channels, I'm just gonna name them red, green, and blue. And again, I don't wanna have to type blue checkbox every time, so I get rid of the checkbox in the name. And finally, for the execute button, execute and rename it without the button in the name. So now that we have done that, we go here in code view. And as you can see, it already has a lot of it. But as you can see, I can't really do anything with it. So here, this is the basic code that it needs to function the way it is. So now we go, the first one I, I did was the select image, so I go here and I create a callback. So this is where we're gonna be able to edit. So here I do the same thing that I did for the first one, give it a file and path name. So file, I'm here, I'm only gonna name them file and path instead of file name and path name. Path equals, and it's gonna be the same command. UI get file, jpeg and we're going to tell the user to pick an image and we do the same the same step so we check if the user selected a file or not so if it's equal if file is equal to zero or if path is equal to zero. We're gonna display user 
pressed cancel. So this part is going to look a little similar, but right now you'll see the differences that this code is going to have from the other one. So here, display again. Try again. Else. File name, so we need to again concatenate the file and the path name. So str cat path comma file. And here we're actually going to call a function that we are going to create, and we're going to pass the basic app and another variable that I'm going to name image file. So here, as you can see, all the functions have app in it. And you'll see why that's important in a second. So now we are done with this function. So we can continue to create the update image function. So we can go up here to the code browser and select function. We're going to add a function. So here, I select all of this that's before the parentheses, and I'm going to just type update image. And then here, I'm going to do a comma image file. And actually, I made a mistake here. It shouldn't have been image file. It should have been file name, because here it has file name. But over here, when I pass it, I'm going to name it different in this function. So here, we're going to have it as image file. And I'm going to do im. So this isn't a specific command. This is just what I'm naming it. im is going to be im read. So read the image, image file. So read the image that I'm catching right here. And then we're going to do app dot image file. So anything that says app dot before it is pretty much a global variable. Since we haven't created any variable, any global variable, this we're going to create in one second. So app dot image file. So we're making it global because as you can see for the for the callbacks that are already there, we I can't just add it here. So I need to make these global in order to catch them in the other functions. So I'm making this app image file already readable. So now I need to tell it, hey, display the image with scaled colors. So and this is going to be in app dot UI axis. And this, if you pay attention over here, that's what this one's called, the axis that we created. So I'm telling it, hey, I want you to display in this axis. I want you to display the image. So we're done with that part. And now we are going to create a startup function. This step is going to be a little different than the previous one. In the other one, we didn't create a startup function. But I'm going to show you how you can create one. So you can click here where it says app, and we can go to callbacks, and we add a startup function. So it created it right here for us. And with this, I'm simply going to turn off a couple of the, of the settings that it has for the axes. And you'll see in one second what I mean. UI axes. So here, if you look at it, I don't want to have the, the x-axis, the y-axis, all these numbers, because we're just going to display an image, not a graph. So I'm going to write visible, comma, off. Then I'm going to call the axis, app.ui axis. And I'm telling it I want to display image types in this axis. So that's why this was important. 
if I didn't do the startup function, this line would have to go right here in the update image. So now we're going to call update image. And I want to tell it, hey, I want to display the red Corvette as soon as the app starts. So now we're going to create the global variables that I was talking about. So we go up here in the properties in the code browser, we go click on properties and we're going to add a property. So we delete where it says property and I'm going to add two properties in this case. One is gonna be path name and one is gonna be image file. So you see here how I named them image file and not app.image file. Well, here, if you see, take a look at our code browser, it automatically added the app.image file over here. So that's why I don't have to do it right here. Because if you do it here, then it's gonna be app.app.image file. So we just name them what we want the variable to be. Then we're going to go to our select folder over here in the component browser. And we're going to create the callback for that button. Now here, that's why we created the path name, because like I said, I can't simply catch them right here. I can't edit it, but I can make a global variable. So since we want the path name to be able to be accessed by the execute button, I made it a global variable. So we're gonna do app.pathname equals UI get directory. And we're gonna tell it again where to start. So we're going to start in the C drive. And if you can see here, it already tries to guess what I where I want to start. So users, user. And that's it for this one. And now the if statement, if the app.path name is equal to zero, display user pressed cancel. Try again. Else display app dot path name. So here I'm telling it Hey, if the user does select a path name, I want it to show, and it's gonna show right here on the command window. It's gonna print it to make sure that the user actually meant to select that specific folder. Okay, and now we can finally move on to the execute button. So we click on execute and we create the callback. I'm going to check it to see if you guys have any questions right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to start by putting our first output, which is going to be in figure one. It's going to be image show, I am show, and we're going to display the global variable that we passed, which is going to be image file. And we're going to title it just like we did in the previous one color image. And we're going to do final. And then this one is going to be a little different than the other one. Here we're going to do app dot file name because that's where we saved our that's our edit field where it says file name dot value. Then we do final equals string concatenation final comma one dot jpeg and save as 
PCF, comma, full file, app dot path name, comma, final. Another the neat little thing about using App Designer instead of GUI is that here, every time I type a parentheses, it automatically creates the end for it. But sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I forget to type uh, the end parentheses for one. If there's too many put together, like right here, sometimes I forget. So now we're going to move on to the channels. And we do this part exactly like we did in the other one. So it's going to be yr, comma, xr equals I am hist. And here we're gonna, we don't have a, but we have again, app.image file. And this stays the same, colon, comma, colon, comma, one. And we do the same for the next two channels. And one thing I actually forgot to mention, guys, is um, that on the previous one for the guide, I I got the, the callbacks in a specific order because of that's how I created them. But they don't necessarily have to be in order because they, they act as an interrupt. So they only call them when they are being used. So even if they were in a different order, it would, it would still work the same way. They would only be called once the user tries to call them. So now we're going to move on to figure two. And we're going to reset it here as well. Hold off. Figure two. Tell it that, hey, we still want to work there. So now we're going to do if is equal. And here, this part is also a little different because we don't need to actually create a callback for app.blue, app.green, or app.red. We can simply call it here, app.red.value. If that is equal to 1, then we plot xr, yr as a red line. And we create the inside if statement the same way. If is equal app dot green dot value comma one or if blue is equal to one, we hold on else. We hold off. And here it already, like I said, it already did the end for me for these if statements. So now we can just copy this if statement and do it for green and red. So this is going to be green. This is going to be red. I mean, green and blue. My bad. YG, XG. And I want a green line. And now for blue. And now that we're done with that, we want to tell it to save it. So we can copy this right here as well. And we're going to name it histogram, just like in the other one, histogram. This is going to be. And now we can run it. I'm going to name it app designer.
So as you can see, we created the startup function to start with the image. So, hey, I want to select a different image. I want to select the white Corvette. In the other one, I was renaming them as white Corvette and red Corvette. So here I'm gonna rename it as just white. I'm gonna select the folder again in Corvette. And I wanna see the green, the red one. So you can see the red channel here. And let's go check if it saved them. And it saved them right here. So, hey, I changed my mind. I wanna see all three channels. And we can see all three channels. And it updated the picture here as well. So I'm gonna check if you guys have any questions. No, no questions? Please put any questions in the Q&A section or even in the chat from any of the attendees. Um, it's John Barkum again. I don't know if, if you're following along in the chat, but we will be making this uh, available to all the, and I can send an email out to all the attendees. And so the slides will be available and a recording of this session will be available. So are, are there any other questions? Okay, so I see a question from Roger Wilson. So this is very basic code that I use. So. I was asked to create a user interface for existing software that we already have. So this specifically doesn't apply, but with this code, you can you can do the pretty much the basic work that that the that the code is doing, just at a much less high at a much lower definition. So if you save these images, you can here you can separate the channels, like I said, but the GUI that I actually was working on most recently um, went from just a user having to type code into the soft, existing software to using my GUI, and now the user can just press buttons and it will automatically do it for them. How much making GUIs is involved in your line of work? So. For me, for this specific project, I work in a lot of GUI making because I, I want to be able to provide a friendlier user interface. So this is this this is pretty much all I do for this specific project, create GUIs. Norma, this is Teresa Schaefer. Can you talk a little bit about um, your experience coming into the avionics department and your work related to the GUI creation and how quickly you were able to start doing engineering work once you uh, came to Navair? Okay, so um, when I first started, I, I can say I used MATLAB maybe a handful of times in college. Um, I used them for, for only once or twice in a class and for research, I would use it very often, but I still was not very familiar to it. So when I came on board with Navair, I, I, my supervisor told me that he would like for me to learn it. So as soon as he told me he wanted for me to learn it, I started reading a little bit about it and trying to do some codes on my own, simply, simply to test out my skills. And the cool thing about MATLAB is that, like I said, it can give you a lot of support so you can always check their MathWorks website and you can always type help and the command you need help with and it will automatically give you some support even by itself on the app so i for me it was it was a very easy transition um there's a lot it i i think one thing that that you need to know is never be afraid to ask questions for me I specifically, for in this one, I didn't need any help, but I just got um, rotated into another project as well. And in that project, I do need a lot of help. 
and the people that I need help from are always there. They, we have a lot of support, so it's always good to ask questions when you do need the help. Awesome, thank you for that response. And what do you feel was the most beneficial for you as a student in preparing you for the professional environment? So I think I think one thing, um, at least for me as an engineer, um, college was, oh, it was so stressing. Um, I, I had a, a pretty good GPA and that, that was my main concern a lot of the time. I mean, I always cared about learning, of course, but I never wanted to drop my GPA. So coming into work, I, I, I didn't want to give a bad um, impression of me to my bosses and stuff like that. But work is nothing, well, not nothing, but it's very different than college. Um, it's not as stressful. Um, the load of work can can sometimes be big, but believe me, nothing like like college. Even even a a a, a short semester um, or even a lightweight semester, like twelve credits, was way harder than what we have to do now. It's 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 a lot of more support in the work environment than in school. I have to come off mute. Thanks, that's good advice. Um, and now you'd mentioned a little bit in talking about how this GUI was used to support the work that you're doing um, for radars. Has How has that been to actually take engineering work and be able to use it to support the, the bigger mission and, and the Navy and our fleet? So um, the GUI that I created um, is very easy to use. It's simply clicking buttons. And like I said, it automates a lot of having to type. So in, in that specific GUI, um, it, it really does help a lot, specifically for my boss. He is not a coding person. He doesn't really know how to code. And this GUI um, specifically can automate the codes for a Python script and instead of having to type, hey, I'm logging in, I'm using this username, this password, I'm trying to look at these images, you simply click the button and it automatically opens the window to select for you to select your images or for you to type in your password. You only need to type buttons and your username and password. You don't need to type pretty much not any code for that. Awesome. We all like improved efficiency and automation. Absolutely. I do see in the chat that um, it was added if anyone is new to the Mad Lab, Matt Lab and would like a free online course, there is a link in the particular chat um, that you guys can access. Thank you for, for adding that. Are there any other questions? Uh, there, there is a question in the chat. What made you choose Navair? Um, for me, Navair made me feel like I mattered. I, I had I had like five different uh, job offers, and they were all. I had one with Texas Instruments, and quite honestly, that had always been my dream company. But when I interviewed with Navair. That was the first time that I was in an interview that it felt more like a conversation rather than an interview. And I felt cared for in that conversation. That's fantastic. Thank you for the question, Hugo. Any other questions? Uh, there's so, a question in the chat. It says, what kind of things do you do with signals? So right now, I 
don't really do anything with signals. Um, I am part of the software part of it, not specifically the, the signal processing. Um, but I, I, I do hope to, to be able to get a rotation with something that's a little bit more hands-on like that. Awesome. And, and you mentioned rotation. So just to provide a, a little bit more feedback for the audience, um, if you are a new employee or an entry-level employee here at NOC AD, all of our engineer scientists and um, engineers who are part of our development program will go through two rotations to help expose them to the different uh, jobs and careers and, and avenues within engineering and science that we do here at NOC AD. So it's a great way to broaden your technical expertise and your network um, here at the command. All right. It looks like we have uh, approached the, the two o'clock timeline. So we'll give it one last chance for any other open questions. And if anybody would like to ask either Norma or myself any questions after or ask uh, Dr. Barkham any questions about uh, NAVC, we'll put our email addresses in the chat and you're welcome to reach out to us at that point and we'd be happy to engage or connect you with, with others uh, and get your questions answered. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Dr. Barkham. Uh, yes, and we are, we are just exactly, in fact, a little bit over the hour. So all I'll conclude with is I certainly want to thank Norma for, for a very interesting presentation. And, and that's really good to see that since I was doing MATLAB quite some time ago myself. Next month on this exact same time, um, next month on this same time, the 25th of March, 1 p.m., we will have the next in this series, and this will be from, from NSWC Carter Rock Division. It'll be a presentation on machine learning and neural nets as applies to ship maneuvering from our one of our top scientists in our uh, maneuvering and sea keeping area. So stay tuned for that. We'll pump out to everybody who's, who's attended this in addition to go back to the, the folks in your schools and universities and contacts that you found out about this this one and you'll see more on this lecture for, the, for next month. So again, uh, thank you everybody. And I hope this was useful and looking forward to seeing you all next month, same time.